lovely friends, it is your friend Michelle L. Myers, aka Autism Whisperer. I think the number one question I get as an Autism Whisperer is, I cannot potty train my child. They are five, they are six, they are seven. Sometimes someone is still wearing diapers and people are just, you know, that's the biggest issue. One of the biggest issues. I think meltdowns might be the second, but when we get to that potty training, there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of impatience, as well as just not a lot of support that really makes much sense. So hopefully I can tell you how I potty trained all seven of my autistic children. They range from levels one, two, and three. It wasn't like we had all what people call high functioning, which we do not like to use that word. Because someone can be a level three and they are functioning at their very best and that is a high level for them. And then someone else who might be, quote, a level one is just completely falling apart and not supported and all sorts of things. And that's not highly functioning. So that's also why a lot of autistic people, we don't like that phrase. So what's up with this potty training thing? Again, this one. So I'm going to tell you exactly some little tips that might help you and perhaps give you some perspective as to what the autistic child might be going through when you're trying to potty train them. The first thing, we have to look at a bathroom, all right? What you see is, it's a room, a little room in the house, echoes a little bit, you know, we take showers in there, we use the bathroom, and when you feel that feeling that causes you to need to, you know, use the restroom, this is where you go. It's quite simple sometimes. Although you see it as a room of, you know, where you go and do a particular thing, the autistic child is looking at and the bathroom is just yet another room. Yet another room I have to memorize the sounds in. Yet another room the lighting is different. It's just another overwhelming room that I have to learn things about before I can feel safe. I want to talk about that word safe for just a moment. A lot of times autistic people, we act or react differently. It feels differently. You want me to pull my pants down and sit on something that's cold versus, you know, the warmness of my pants, my trousers, or where I sat on a couch feels completely different than when I go to sit on a toilet. So the first thing I need for you to understand is It's not about just, I don't want to use the bathroom. It's that I have to get acclimated to this completely different place that you want me to do something that feels different and smells different and sounds different. And it's just, everything is different about this room. And the bathroom is just yet another room. A lot of times, autistic people, we act or react to things, maybe what you might seem like bizarrely or for no reason. And it's because there's a feeling of not feeling safe when you're insecure or whenever you're overwhelmed sensory wise. So we don't just have where we feel overwhelmed. We actually have where you can literally feel unsafe and you get kind of a franticness about it. When you're entering the world of potty, potty training, toilet training, some people call it, it can be really difficult for the autistic person. One of the reasons why routine and consistency is so important is because autistic people are very sensitive. We go into a room and just because we're quiet doesn't mean we're not noticing the lights, the temperature, the feelings, the vibrations, everything. And usually it's all at once. Number one, the lighting must not be so very bright. We know in most bathrooms, the lighting is just this white light. It's bright. There's a bunch of bulbs. And that's a problem. Why? Because I'm already overwhelmed just because I'm hearing, sensing, smelling and things times 90. So... Just like you would any other person, dim the lights a little bit. Some of you might actually access getting a light or a lantern or something that the child knows. When I go to the bathroom, when I go into that new room, it's comforting. It's not shocking brilliant white, but it's comforting. I tell parents sometimes you can have the child pick out a nightlight with you or some type of lamp that only gets used when they go to the bathroom. This does two things for me. It calms me because the lighting isn't too bright, but it also lets me know it's like this anticipation of something special that's just for me in this space. Whether I can communicate that to you or not, trust me, it is really important to make sure you create environments for the autistic person when they're learning something new. So after you adjust the lighting in the room, the next thing you must address, of course, is the sound. Most bathrooms do not have carpet in them for obvious reasons. But for the autistic person, not only are my, are my feet feeling different, 
The problem with this is you're asking me to learn something new while I'm already switching gears on. I was just on carpet. Now I'm on a floor that's echoing. Now I'm sound. Sound is echoing and I'm just all over the place. Then you try to talk to me and tell me that you want me to sit on something. And if you haven't fixed the lighting, the light is bright. And then you also want me to listen to you as your voice is different inside of a bathroom. Your voice is echoey inside of a bathroom. So one of the ways that you can help the artistic person who's learning how to use a toilet is you want to have either you roll out a carpet or you can put, you know, they have bath mats, they have rugs you can put around a toilet. They have all sorts of things now that you can decrease the echo in the bathroom. This helps the artistic person not feel so overwhelmed. So first, if you fix the lighting, then you've muffled that sound down to where it's not. I mean, we hear the toilet running. We hear the water in the walls. If there's a shower, if there's leaky things going on, we hear all of that. So if you can dampen down the noise for me, after you've dampened down the brilliance of light, we've got two things conquered, the lighting and the sound. The third thing to really help your child or autistic person learning how to use a toilet is you must the feel of it. If the bathroom is always freezing cold, I'm less likely wanting to drop my pants to do anything because I'm nice and warm and I'm comfortable, right? So the bathroom has to be at a temperature when you're first introducing this. Now listen, all these things are just when you're first introducing it. After the child is already potty trained, a lot of this doesn't really matter because they've got down a routine. They've got down a routine. But when you're first introducing them to potty training, this is brilliant because you've taken care of light, sound, and now touch what I'm touching. So atmospheric. The bathroom needs to be warm. Then, when I go to sit on the toilet, if it's freezing cold or the pot is freezing cold because plastic can be cold too, I'm less likely to want to sit there because also I know it's coming. I've left this really warm space and you drag me into this place that's too loud, it's too bright, and then you want me to drop my trousers and sit on a very, very cold thing that makes me feel very rigid. See, the camera even felt rigid. So one of the best things you can do for that is, obviously, they have heated seats that you can put on toilets, but if that's not a resource that you can tap into, you can do a couple of things. You can get washcloths that you sit on the sides of the toilet. Now, then you have to be worried about them falling in. So it does depend on the age of your child to get that. But if your child is young and just starting to potty train, you should be sitting right there. Don't ever leave a child when they're first learning to potty train in there completely by themselves. Accidents happen, even for neotypical children. They could fall in toilets. Kids do amazing things within five seconds, so you have to be very careful. So sometimes you can have, there are actually seat warmers, there are actually seat covers. You can go to Walmart and buy a seat cover for a toilet, and that just at least will bridge that initial shock when a person sits on there and it goes and it's a different temperature than their body is. You can also go and say, okay, we can do a little dance right before we get on there. I sometimes utilize dancing for just about everything. So if you know something cold is coming, then you create a ritual that the kid is gonna know, okay, this is something that's gonna happen. I can't change it, but I've, I'm ready. I'm confident about it. Why? Because I did my potty cold dance. It could be something as simple as, okay, the potty's cold like outside, but it won't hurt my hide. I don't know, make it rhyme. But the point about it is to prepare the child for that temperature change. After you finally have fixed the lighting and if you fix the sound and you fix the atmosphere, you have already done something so amazing for your child. You made accommodations. One more time, what were they? If you're potty training, you must accommodate the lighting, you must accommodate sound, and you must accommodate the environment as in touch. Make sure that temperature is pretty, you know, conducive to their own. I'm Michelle L. Myers, and I'll talk to you all again soon here on Autism Westboro. Put on post notifications for videos. I hope you enjoy this potty video.